إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We start as we always do first and foremost by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our one true God we show him our utmost gratitude and appreciation for each and every single one of the infinite unending blessings that he's bestowed upon us. Every gift, every blessing, every moment that he's given to us, we thank him. We show him our gratitude and our appreciation. And we praise him and compliment him on top of that because he gives and he doesn't take back. He gives and there's no end to his giving. And while doing so, he is one, he is divine, he's beautiful, he's perfect, he's supreme. And on this beautiful special day of Friday, the day that we gather together to do the dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah, to mention Allah, to declare the absolute greatness of the one true God, Allah, we bear witness and we testify that there is nothing worthy of our worship, of our unquestioned devotion, except the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mighty, majestic, and beautiful is He. And our Lord and Master, He created us, He put us on this planet, and He gave us a book to teach us how to live our lives. Yet alongside that book, He gave us an example to show us how to live that life. And that example, that role model, is none other than our beloved Prophet, our Messenger, our Guide, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah to bless, protect, honor, and compliment him, his family, his followers, his companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. May Allah include us from amongst them. Allah, He reminds us over and over again throughout the Quran, believers have the taqwa of Allah. Put a shield, a wall between you and the anger of Allah. What is that shield and wall? It is that we fulfill the commandments of Allah and we stay away from His prohibitions. And then He tells us, do that. Have taqwa the way Allah deserves. And don't breathe your last breath. Don't die except that you are submitting to Allah. And again, He reminds us, believers have the taqwa of Allah. You call yourself a Muslim. You call yourself a mu'min. Have that taqwa. Put up that shield, that wall, that barrier between you and the fire of hell. What is that barrier and wall? We fulfill the commandments Allah has given us and we stay away from the prohibitions He's refrained us from. And then He adds on and speak the truth. Whoever has these two qualities of taqwa and speaking the truth, Allah will forgive your mistakes and Allah will correct your actions. Whoever then truly obeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah bless and protect him, will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. I want everyone to, to scoot up. There's already a lot of people standing in the back. Please scoot up and fill in uh, all the space that we can. In our lives, whenever we are asked to do something, if I tell you to do something, Sometimes we will ask, sometimes we will ask for the reasoning or what is the outcome, what is the goal, what is the purpose behind this? If you are in school, if you are at work, there are always what is our outcome, what is our goal in doing this? You go and you ask your teacher, all right, I'm going to write this paper, what is it going to do for me? And the curriculum is going to say, if you do this assignment, the goal is to teach you this. At work, we are spending this much money on this new product. What is it going to do for us? It is going to get us A, B, and C. And so in all of these things that we engage in, there is an outcome, there is a result that is often predefined. A predefined goal that you should be looking for. A predefined result that you should hope to get if you do that task properly. And this is exactly what Allah lays out for us when He introduces the month and the obligations of Ramadan and fasting to us. 
in the passage that gives us tingles, you know, every time we hear it when Ramadan rolls around, Allah He tells us, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. Believers, we have mandated fasting upon you. Just like we have made it obligatory on those before you. What is the reasoning? What is the goal? What is the outcome you should expect if you fast properly? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you gain taqwa. You get this awareness of Allah so you are more cognizant to fulfill His commandments and you are better able to stay away from His prohibitions. This is the first ruling and the first command Allah tells us, and He follows it up with the goal and outcome. If you fast properly, what should you expect from yourself? More taqwa. More awareness, more ability to recognize, am I obeying Allah and am I staying away from His prohibitions? Two ayahs go by and Allah says, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ This is the month that the Qur'an was revealed in. And so implicitly, this is a command to us, connect with the Qur'an, read the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an, live by the Qur'an, think about the Qur'an, do something with this book. And at the end, Allah associates this task with the goal and outcome that you should expect from it. He ends by saying, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ if you were to engage with the Qur'an properly, your relationship actually grew. You cultivated something with the words of Allah at every night that goes by at the end of this month. What is your test to see? Did I read the Qur'an properly? Did I become more grateful? Did I become more appreciative to Allah and to creation? And there are more actions, but we'll end on the last one. In, in, uh, in, in this section where Allah, He says, then you go and make dua to me. You ask me, you call upon me, you beg me, you, you, you ask me. And so in this dua, we are coming to Allah, we are begging Allah, we are asking Allah. And again, what is our test to see? Am I improving through my dua? Is my dua helping me and changing me the way it's supposed to? Allah, He says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ if you were to make dua properly, if you were to submit and obey and believe Allah as dua requires, you would get rushed out of it. You would get complete guidance in your life. You would be settled in your worldly affairs ready for the hereafter. And so these are three out of the four or five actions that Allah gives us. And He follows them up with a goal and an outcome. So let's walk through these things and see how does fasting help me get more taqwa? How does reading and connecting with the Qur'an make me more grateful? How does making more better dua make me someone who is better guided in this life? And as we all know, when you go back home today, when you go back to work today, if you close the door and there's a bottle of water, is anyone gonna come and hit you over the head for drinking that water? No one's going to do anything. No one's even going to know. You're not going to get fined. A lightning bolt is not going to come out of the sky. You're not going to be held accountable right now, punished immediately for breaking your fast. Even though we know we're not allowed to eat, we're not allowed to drink, we're not allowed to be intimate during the time of fasting. So what is stopping me if I'm in secret? No one's going to tell me a single thing. Why don't I just eat? Why don't I just drink? There's that little whisper, the little voice of taqwa inside of your heart saying, Hey, Allah is watching. Allah knows you're going to do this. Allah doesn't want you to do this. And you want to obey Him, right? That little voice inside of you, that little voice in your heart and your mind telling you, Don't eat, don't drink. That's that little bit of taqwa in our hearts telling us, you know Allah is watching, so obey Him, stay away from His prohibitions. And so it's a test every single day. It's a training session every single day that if I am presented and have easy access to disobey, I have the ability, I have the awareness, I have the self-restraint to stop myself. It's as simple as that.
If there is food in front of me while I'm fasting and I can say no, if I don't eat and drink, what's going to happen to me in a few days? I will die. But if there's something that pleases my eyes on my screen, on my phone, on my laptop, that I know I shouldn't be looking at, because it violates the sanctity of, of, of a human, then if I cannot eat and not drink, shouldn't that be a training ground for me to say, I'm not going to watch this inappropriate video? Shouldn't that be a training for my ears? I'm not going to listen to this adult comedy that's filled with garbage and filth. Shouldn't that train me to be someone that if I want to argue with someone, I want to fight with someone, I want to yell, I want to live by my rage, I cannot eat and I cannot drink. So I have trained myself enough to do psalm, to do imsak, to do habs, hold myself back, restrain myself because I have some tools to not let my tongue loose, to not go out disparaging people, to not go out lying and cheating and backbiting and cursing. I have those tools within me. I've been practicing them all day. And so as the days go by, as the nights go by, as Ramadan ends and the next year comes, ask myself, if I fasted properly, if I put my whole heart, my whole mind, my whole soul into ensuring, am I being a better, more aware, obedient servant of my Creator? I can do it with not just food and drink. I can do it with my eyes. I can do it with my tongue. I can do it with my personality and my anger and my rage and my, uh, 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 my arrogance and my pride. I can do so with the way I earn my money and the way I invest my money. If I can stop myself from eating and drinking because I have self-control of Allah doesn't want me to eat and drink right now, I can express that same self-control. Allah doesn't want me to look at this right now. Allah doesn't want me to earn my money in this way. Allah doesn't want me to treat my family in this manner. That is the test that we have. When did I fast properly? Did I gain more taqwa? Am I better able to live on the spot, stop myself from doing something I shouldn't be doing? If I can have everybody scoot up and fill in all the gaps. And then the next action, the next task that Allah assigns to us, He tells us, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ This is the month that the Qur'an was revealed in. And it wasn't just a book that was revealed, it was revealed for what? It was revealed as guidance. What is a guide? When you go to a new country and you don't know where you're supposed to go, who do you hire? You go find a tour guide so that they hold your hand, they get you the taxi, they say, go over here, go over there. Don't go to those places. They tell you how to navigate that new land. And so the Qur'an does exactly that. We have no clue how to live this life. The Allah sent us the Qur'an to teach me, how do I navigate through the struggles of this life? How do I earn an income? How do I start a family? How do I deal with all of the confusion that is coming up today? That's why the Qur'an is here to hold me by the hand and to guide me through each and every one of these steps of life. Whether I'm a child, I'm a maturing adult, or I'm an old man or an old woman, this book is here to show me, teach me, guide me. What am I supposed to be doing in my life? And sometimes guidance is very ambiguous. It's very uh, esoteric. You have no idea what it actually means. It just sounds good. But Allah, He then says, nas wa bayyinatim min al huda." It's also clear. It's understandable. You and I, we may not be scholars, but I can pick up a passage about gratitude in the Qur'an and learn to be more grateful. I can be a mother or a father begging for a child and the dua of Zakaria hits home to me that they've been begging for a child for how many years? It hits home. I don't need to be a scholar. Yes, there are discussions for the scholars to have with the Qur'an and to deal with those subjects. But for a child to read about, wow, Allah, He see, keeps saying He's the most perfect and the most powerful. No doubt my God is the most powerful. These concepts should hit home to all of us because they're clear, they're obvious, they're understandable. furqan, And it helps us differentiate between right and wrong. And so if we engage with the Qur'an properly, if we are connected to the Qur'an, not just by reciting it, not just by listening to it. I know it's Ramadan and all we want to do is read and recite. Read and recite. 
But if you just read and recite, you don't get the three goals Allah just mentioned here. If I read and I don't understand, if I listen and I don't understand, am I getting the huda? Am I getting the guidance? Am I getting the life lessons Allah is trying to impart on my heart? Am I growing through the commandments of the Qur'an? Am I maturing through the, the nurturing of the Qur'an? Take some time to understand this book. Whether it be the short talk that we pay attention to after Isha, or we find some content online or some books to explain the words of Allah to us. Go, do it. And if our engagement, if our connection to the Qur'an was as it should be, it won't be perfect. But if we're in the right direction, what will happen? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ You will become more grateful. How will you become more grateful? The first reason, first and foremost, Allah, I don't know how to live this life. I don't know what to do in this life. I see everybody else going to school, going to college, getting a job, getting married, buying a house, having kids, and then they die. Is that the purpose of my life? Allah, I don't know. You tell me, you teach me. And when Allah tells us, no, you have a higher purpose. You have goals in this life to be upright, moral, obedient servants to me and to take care of creation and to work for a hereafter. What does it do to me? Allah, thank you. Thank you for teaching me what to do in my life. When we don't know how a family is supposed to run, Allah tells us. And so when our families are better because Allah told us, Alhamdulillah, Allah, thank you. Allah, I'm so appreciative that you taught me. That you educated me, that you inspired me. When we got down times, when we got high times, and the Qur'an is vibing with us, and, we, and it makes sense, and it hits home. Alhamdulillah, Allah, I thank you. I appreciate you for giving me this book. The concepts of the Qur'an over and over, a repetition of be grateful. These, it, this is what hits home. So I'm grateful to Allah for giving me this book, for guiding me, for teaching me. And that's also going to make me more grateful to my family, my parents, my children, my spouse, my friends, my family. And to everyone around me. And so if I engage with the Qur'an as is due, I will become more grateful. And that's our test. Every night, every day, as the month of Ramadan comes to an end, did I become more grateful and more appreciative? And the last topic we'll talk about in this section where Allah, He says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي when, your serv when my servants ask you about me, and we ask this all the time, when should I make dua? How should I make dua? Can, should I make dua out loud when I'm standing, when I'm sitting, when I'm in sajda? Allah's response is, inni qareeb. Don't worry about the when and, and, and what time. Just make dua. Just make dua. We say, what dua should I make? What time should I make it? What way should Allah says, forget it. Inni qareeb. I am close. I'm close. I'm always close. Make dua to me. That's it. And I respond to the one who makes dua to me. If someone calls upon me, I respond. I may not give you what you want exactly right away because the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us that your dua will be responded to in one of three ways. You'll get what you're asking for. Number one, some harm, some calamity, some difficulty would be averted out of your life. Or number three, it will be saved for you in a matter even better in the hereafter. And Allah He says, if you want to ensure that I respond to you, bi. Then guess what? Respond to me. How do I respond to Allah? You obey Him. You listen to Him. You follow the life He wants you to live. bi. Believe in me and believe that I will respond. And what's our goal? What's our outcome? لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that you all get a sense of guidance in your life. You get a sense of figuring out how to navigate this life. It makes sense. You're not a confused mess. You're not wandering in the dark. When you make dua, even if you don't get what you want for 20 years, there's some comfort in your heart. No human can help me. It is only Allah who can help me.
Everyone else I ask, they can die before they can give it to me. But Allah, He's the ever-living. Someone may not hear or understand. Allah hears and He understands everything. So why not ask, why not go to the one who is completely capable, the most kind, who will never turn me away if I respond and I obey? So ask Him and we will find comfort, ease and guidance in our life. May Allah make us from people that we fast and we gain taqwa, that we read Quran and we become more grateful, that we make dua and we get guidance in our lives. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا جنتك جنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير حساب ولا عذاب ما حبيبك Rasulik. O Allah, we ask you for the absolute best in this life, the absolute best in the hereafter, to protect us from the punishment of the hereafter, and to enter us into your gardens of paradise alongside your messenger without any questioning, without any punishment. Allahumma ghfil lana dhunubana. Allahumma baddil sayyatina kullaha hasanat. Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. O Allah, forgive us, our parents, our children, and all of the believing men and women until the end of time. اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهلك وخاصتك والله make us from the people of the Quran those that are your special people اللهم رزقنا حلاوة القرآن اللهم رزقنا حلاوة القرآن اللهم رزقنا حلاوة القرآن oh Allah allow us to taste the sweetness of Quran the sweetness of its recitation the sweetness of listening to it and the sweetness of loving it and acting upon it and devoting our lives to it oh Allah make us people that fast and gain taqwa that we recite the Quran and live by the Quran and we become more grateful that we make dua to you and we find guidance in our life oh Allah we end by asking you to bless protect honor and compliment your beloved prophet your beloved Messenger Muhammad Rasulullah, his family, friends, companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time, include us from amongst them. Subhanallah, we have the Subhanallah, we have the Subhanakallah, we have the Nashadu Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, and Nasta, Firuka, one or two, Ilaik.